All right, guys. It is 3.30 in the morning, and I'm pretty tired, so I'm going to have de uh, Day of the Dead tomorrow morning, afternoon, because I don't... After this, I'm not going to feel like watching a whole movie and recording and stuff like that. So definitely tomorrow morning, afternoon, this I'll have a video for Day of the Dead up, and I am excited for it because it's my favorite in the, front, in the whole series of, day, of the, the Dead films. But figure do one of these because they're sh pretty short. This is another two-parter of Goosebumps, and this is Night of the Living Dummy, Part 3. And when I was a kid, man, I used to be afraid of the <laughs> slappy on the cover of these books, of the Night of the Living Dummy ones. I don't know why in the TV series they made him completely different looking. Like, on the books... He like wears like a suit and has like black hair. But then in the show he has like this orange curvy hair. So I don't know what the reason for that was, but it never sat right with me because it just didn't look like Slappy. But I mean, obviously Slappy is just modeled after Chucky. Like it's so obvious that that's where he got the idea from. But this one's a ventriloquist dummy. Chucky's not different. It's like the vanilla ice. Ding, 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 ding. See, mine's different. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's like that. It's like just just different enough. But Slappy is cool. He has his own little personality and everything. So this is Night of the Living Dummy Part 3, Part 1, I guess. Part 1 of Part 3. So let's watch and get into it. So for those who don't know Slappy and the whole story and mythos behind him, which is weird that they never made a TV episode for the first Night of the Living Dummy. I always thought that was strange. They just went right to Night of the Living Dummy 2, Night of the Living Dummy 3, and then they did Bride of the Living Dummy which is a great episode, too. It's not on Netflix because they only have, like, the special two-part episodes. They don't have, like, the actual seasons. But I'm already on that. Got them downloaded already. So that's going to be a fun one because that's one of my favorite episodes from this show back in the day. So Slappy is a ventriloquist dummy that comes to life when you read this... It's ba like Chucky, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll just do it and blah, give me the power, I beg of you. But, like, this is like a card that's in his front pocket, his shirt pocket, and when you read it, it brings him to life. And Slappy is a little prankster. He just likes playing uh, pranks and fucking with people because he's a little dick. So, this family here, the father is huge into ventriloquist dummies. Like, he is a ventriloquist, I don't know, professionally, but he, you know, talks without moving his lips while using the dummies and stuff, and he has a whole bunch of dummies up in his attic, so he's really into ventriloquist dummies. So we open up with, we have a, a, a girl and her little brother, and the father is carrying a case up the stairs which wakes both the kids up and the sister goes up and she pulls one like a sheet off the chair and there's one of the dummies sitting there and he starts talking and laughing maniacally and she says that it's Daniel her brother like and that he can't disguise his voice from her and then Daniel walks behind her and says like what's going on I heard a bumping in the hallway so that freaks her out, and then they find out that it's they take the dummy off the chair, and there's a hand there, and it's the dad. And I always thought it was hilarious that the way that he talks, as like while using this dummy, and the way he laughs and everything is the same exact voice and laugh when this dummy actually comes to life later in the in the episode. <laughs> like I thought that was like so funny. Like, when I first saw this, it's like, but he has, he has the same voice. So, like, did the dad know when this dummy comes to life, that's how he's going to talk? And that's how, why he started talking like that? Like, he has the same exact voice. Like, it's pretty funny. And then the dad opens up the 
case, the big chest that he was carrying up the stairs, and says that the kids are going to love this. I don't know how big they are into ventriloquist dummies, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to love it. I'm pretty sure they just say, oh, that's cool, and then, like, move on with their lives. But he pulls Slappy out, and half his face is missing, because if I recall correctly, at the end of Night of the Living Dummy 2, the protagonist girl in that cracks him on, like, a table, and his part of his face cracks off and he has that part so he has to just glue it on and fix it so that's why his face is all cracked and he's saying that this is an antique and that it's a classy dummy and then he starts you know maneuvering and working him and says like a corny joke like why is your face cracked and he says oh it's because your your jokes they're so bad they crack me up but he sounds again like he sounds just like slappy does when he's alive <laughs> so i don't know why they used the same voices for when the dad's doing the voices as the when they're alive and like working on their own so that's so weird like i just noticed the slappy thing now but the the other guy like his sidekick or like his slave basically <laughs> like he makes him like he's like the muscle bodyguard guy this dummy I've noticed that back in the day when I was a kid. I said, it's the same voice that he uses later. But now I just noticed Slappy, he uses the same voice that is Slappy's voice later. So it's so weird. So the dad ends up gluing the cracked piece of his face back onto Slappy. And they have their cousin Zane who's coming over. Excuse me. And he basically is afraid of everything. A.K.A. he's a pussy. <laughs> he's afraid of everything. And they always play pranks on him whenever he comes over. So they like one time they like dragged him out of bed while he was sleeping, like his mattress and stuff, and just like left him on the front lawn. <laughs> and like a cow came and starts licking him to wake him up. So like he's terrified of everything. And they, the kids love playing pranks on him, their cousin. So the, the sister notices... The, biz the business card, the card in uh, Slappy's shirt, and the dad says, like, oh, but Slappy comes with his own business card. And she ends up reading the incantation, the foreign language that's on it. That was weird. But maybe that's Slappy coming to life because she just read it. And it, I think it's hilarious that she reads this, like, other language like, how does she know how to read this language? Like, yeah, the words you could pronounce, but, like, is she even saying it right? Do you have to say it exactly correct? Like, the words, like, verbatim how they're said in that language? Or can you just read it, like, with an, with an English accent? Like, speaking English, but just reading these words phonetically. And it works, too? I guess so, because, like, I'm, I doubt that's how all those words are actually read in whatever language this is. And then we see, when they go off to bed, we see the glue that uh, he put his cracked face back on. We see it seal itself with this green, like, CGI and stuff that looks not too good. There's some CGI in this episode, I remember. And it's terrible. Like, I mean, come on, it's Goosebumps, a TV show from the 90s. Like, you can't expect, like, great CGI or anything like that. And if I had this guy as my dad, I would have to, like, hit him with a shovel and then use the shovel to dig his grave. Like, this father is so annoying with the pranks. Like, <laughs> we see, like, three in this episode here. And we saw two already with the dummy prank. And now he, like, pretends to cut his thumb off. And he's like, hey, look, I cut my thumb off. Like, it's so, if he's doing, like, two of these a day, you can assume that he does this every day. And I just wouldn't be able to take it. Like, they're just such corny fucking jokes and pranks that he plays. Like, it's like this guy never grew up. So the cousin Zane arrives, and something about the actor who plays this, like, I've said this about a few child actors in, and he's not like a child child, but, I, like, young child to young adult actors. I've said in a few videos on a few films that, they, some of them just have real punchable faces. This kid's one of them. Like, there's just something about him that I just want to punch him in the face. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm a sick human being, that's why. But I say that all the time about Bob in House by the Cemetery, Lucio Fulci's movie. 
and he's also in Manhattan Baby by Lucio Falci. And that kid, that kid, and the the kid from The Shining TV miniseries that Stephen King did, who plays Danny Torrance, those two kids, the most punchable faces of a kid actor in movies for me. Like, I can't watch those movies without thinking of, like, borderline child abuse things to do to them. Like, if I ever saw them in person. I don't know. I'm an evil fuck, I guess. But, like, this guy, too. He just... I just want to punch him in the face for some reason. Cool kid. Punch face. Punch face. So Zane is now into photography, and he has his camera, and he's snapping pictures of Trina, and kind of weird it's his cousin and he's like trying like getting into it like oh you're, you're great you're happening you're doing great like i don't know it's it's weird a little bit and then he takes a picture of daniel and daniel does a little sneezing joke he goes oh i gotta sneeze and like drops a coin in his hand and holds it up so you know that he's getting this shit from his father <laughs> like he you, he's definitely his father's son like a hundred percent and then zane sees slappy when Trina says, here, take a picture of this. And she leans in with Slappy to take the picture of the two of them. And Zane, once he sees the, the dummy, he just like, <sighs> and just freaks the fuck out. And he drops this book that Daniel picks up and it says, Conquer your, Conquering Your Fears. So he's trying to work on conquering his fears here that since he's, like I said, a pussy and he's scared of everything. So they are laughing and making fun of him, of course, for having this book. I mean, guys, don't make fun of him. It's, he's trying to fix himself. He's trying to make himself a better person, conquering his fears. You can read self-help books, but like the great George Carlin said, if you read a self-help book, you're, you're, you could have done it yourself. Like, if you did it yourself, you didn't need help. Like, something like that. I butchered that, but I love George Carlin so much, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, don't make fun of him for reading a self-help book. He, people do that all the time. It's positive. And even Trina says, like, when he says, is there a problem with that, that he has a book, uh, you know, a self-help book, she says, not at all, and hands it back to him and says, right, Daniel? So it's more Daniel that's, like, making fun of him. Even though they both should be making fun of him. Come on. So the parents come down, too, and the father picks Slappy up and starts doing his ventriloquist thing. And there in that scene, it doesn't sound like Slappy. So it's just like the be at the very beginning that his he says like three lines that sound just like Slappy's voice. Here it's a different voice. So I don't know what that's all about. Or maybe I misheard it earlier. But it did sound like Slappy at the beginning. Here it definitely does not. And he says a joke and says, what's your name? And he says, Zane. And he's like, oh, Zane. I guess that's better than being in Zane. I mean, you can hear that two different ways and one is just a stupid joke and one is just hilarious when you picture slappy a dummy fucking zane <laughs> i don't know like it's it's hilarious all right so this is hilarious this scene they show zane sleeping or trying to sleep and then he turns over on the side and he sees the i forget his name we'll get it later like the the one at the beginning the father was playing the prank with like the bodyguard for Slappy, he's wearing a hockey mask and he's just standing by the bedside. And Zane freaks out. And he's wearing a hockey mask and stuff, the, the dummy. And he, Zane just loses it. And he gets up and starts like jumping on the bed like this. And like, no, 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 help me, help me. <laughs> it's so hilarious, man. This kid gets so fucking frightened. And it's funny because we find out later that there's a twist here. And that Zane isn't really as scared as he's uh, pretending to be. But then again, he like we see all these scenes of him being pet, like terrified by these dummies and everything. With no one to like act for. Like, why is he putting the act on when he's by himself? Like, that makes no sense. It's like he's just doing it for us, the audience. It makes no sense when you think about it like that, when you find out the twist, that he's not really scared of these dummies and he's the one that's been moving them around and stuff like that. So, like, why did, why is he petrified here? Like, I, he, I know he's trying to make it seem like the dummies are moving around, but he could have just screamed for help and just said, Hey, help, 
and you know screaming that's it he didn't have to jump on the bed he's hitting him with a pillow and then the feathers are flying all over the place and he says get off of me but no one's touching him like at all so, it's such a funny scene it's so weird but it's it's funny as hell rocky that's the bodyguard dummy's name rocky it fits him who knows what time it is in the night here because he was trying to sleep when this happened. And then the mom just says, why don't you take him downstairs, get him some ice cream? I don't know. It just seems like a random thing to do. Like, who's going down and eating ice cream at, like, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, or whatever time it is, even if it's midnight? I, that just seems strange to me. And then the, the brother and sister, Trina... Trina, right? Yeah, Trina and Daniel are arguing with each other, and each one is saying that they didn't do this prank and stuff, and they're both telling the truth. And it's obvious they're telling the truth. Like, the way they play it, like, it, you believe them 100%. Like, if I was the parent, I would look at both of them and say, like, no, I know my kids. Like, they're, they're not lying, both of them. Like, they're being honest. The way that they just talk to each other and yell at each other and, like, Daniel saying, because his, it was his mask on the dummy, the hockey mask, and she's saying, don't look at me, it was Daniel's mask, and then he comes, and he's like saying, next time you want to do something like this, leave my stuff alone, and like, all of that, it's like, they're, it's too real for them to be lying, so right away, of course, you're not going to think like the dummy did it by himself, but I'd be suspicious of Zane, like I'd say, I don't know about this, like I know my kids, and I know when they're lying, then I don't think they're lying like they're being pretty honest here so I don't know like I don't know why the parents just accept it right away that and then like later on just like ground the two of them basically for the pranks that keep happening to Zane and they're telling the truth so now they're downstairs and I guess they have a red room for his photography like I guess maybe it's a light he brought I don't know but he's developing the pictures that he took earlier uh, then we're about to see some weird stuff. Oh, and it's in the attic where he was developing the pictures. But when you, he looks at the developed pictures, there's dummies instead of, like, Trina and Daniel. And one of the dummies actually is the good dummy from Night of the Living Dummy 2. That's a cool little Easter egg. But, like, and Daniel in one picture, it's Daniel, and then, like, someone who's supposed to be Trina but has like a clown face and stuff so like he says like blames them and says like thanks guys thanks a lot and like runs off like a pansy and <laughs> and like again like how would they do that like how would they manipulate those pictures so that the dummies are in them and stuff like that like there's no way that they did that one there's no evidence here that they're gr great photographers or know how to you know fuck with pictures and stuff and two there was no like photoshop and stuff back then this is developed pictures so all of that makes no sense the fact that he i mean again we know that he's behind all this so he must have done it but there's no way like when they don't know this that he's putting them on there's no way that they would be able to do that. So, that's fucking stupid. And then when they run downstairs after Zane, trying to say, like, hey, we didn't do it, Slappy moves his eyes a little bit. So, Slappy is alive, and he is getting ready to start a revolution. Oh, this kid. I just need to. <laughs> but then he's sitting there with the father and Trina and Daniel are sitting on the floor and he's saying if I teach you something about these dummies maybe you won't be afraid of them and like he shows like how you have to control your mouth and he says that dummies ventriloquism ventri yeah I said that right ventriloquism no I, I'm not how, ventriloquism whatever you know what I'm talking about has been around for hundreds of years and that it's supposed to entertain people and the dummies should not be scary uh, then you see Slappy's leg kick uh, Zane and he freaks out and gets up he's like no he kicked me and like the father's saying it's not possible uh, then the mother Patty is saying like to the father like what did you do like blaming him he's like I didn't do anything but if I recall correctly when we find out the little twist later that Zane's behind all this, I'm pretty sure he made it up that 
he was kicked by Slappy. But we clearly see Slappy's leg kick him. So I don't get that. Unless I'm remembering wrong. But I'm pretty sure we see him, uh, that he says that he made it up. That, like, Slappy didn't really, uh, you know, kick me. That I just pretended that. Uh, But we see him get kicked. So I don't know. We'll find out in a little bit. So they say, uh, Zane's like, I hate this place. I want to leave. And the mother, Patty, is like, no, you can't just leave. We're having dinner. Like, it's in your honor. Like, you can't leave, right? And he's like, okay. So then they go into the dining room, and everything is fucked with. Like, all the corn on the cob is, like, stuck on candlesticks. All the food is just destroyed and ruined and mixed together and stuff like that. And the mom, man, she starts crying. Like... (laughs) At first, she's like, all right, we're just going to go have dinner. Then we're going to talk about it, like, when we're better able to control ourselves. And, like, holding back tears. Uh, Then the father's like, at least we have the roast. And they pick up the the top, and it's that clown dummy, like, crouched up with, like, an apple in his mouth. (laughs) And Zane freaks out and runs away and screams. "Ah!" Oh, it's so funny. And now they're really getting fucking... They're getting punished here. Like, I think they were supposed to go to, like, some camp or something, and now he's saying you can't go because of the them messing up dinner, even though they didn't do it. But it's a shitty situation to be in that situation. Like, that was redundant. But it sucks to be in that situation, that you're being blamed for something that you know you didn't do. And, like, both of them know that they didn't do any of this. So to keep being blamed for it, I'd snap at some point. Like, right back at my parents. I'd be like, yo, I'm telling you I didn't do this. So stop with the fucking blaming and shit. Like, I would lose it after a while. Like, if, you, if any of you have been through that, like, either like with, like, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something that accuses you of, like, cheating or lying and stuff and you didn't do it, oh, that's the most infuriating thing. Then when it's like, yo, I didn't do that. Like, seriously, like, what do I have to do for you to believe me? Like, oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so I, I feel for them because they really didn't do anything. And they're really getting reamed for doing nothing. Even though, of course, to the parents, it's obvious that one of them did it. Because <laughs> there's no dummies that are running around alive in the parents' minds. Like, that's not even an option. So... Of course it's one of the kids. So then they're up in the attic, Trina, Daniel, and the father, and he's taping, uh, he's putting all the dummies in a box and taping it shut and stuff and saying, you're not, you're not going to get my dummies anymore. And then he asks them to confess, and both of them, are, like I said, they're saying, like, I didn't do it. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, there's nothing to confess. And then he says, okay, like, I know you both wanted to go to camp this summer, but... I made up my mind, you guys aren't going. And they freak out. They're like, Dad, no. So they must really want to go to summer camp. Trina looks a little old to be, like, that psyched for summer camp. Or even be going to summer camp. I don't know how old she is in this, but she looks like maybe 14, 15. Maybe she looks older than she actually is. But I I don't know. They don't say their age. But she definitely shouldn't be going to summer camp. Or at least not be that disappointed like, that's the type of age where it's like, oh, I gotta go to summer camp, I don't want to go there. Like, she would be happy for his, her dad to say, you're not going to summer camp. She'd be like, oh, great, I can spend my summer, like, with my friends or whatever like that. Like, that's what it seems like. But then they're punished, and they're not going to summer camp, so I feel bad for them. <laughs> so then we find out that Zane is doing all this himself. And Trina and Daniel were in the attic, and when they hear someone come up the stairs, they hide behind the, the sofa or the couch that's up there. And we have Zane come up and opens up the box, which the father said, like, you're not going to touch my dummies. He put them in that box and he taped it. I, like, would figure that he was going to, like, move it somewhere, like, that they don't know the location. He just taped it and left the box right there in the attic. So what's stopping them from just, like, opening the box? Like, I don't know. That makes no sense. And then, conveniently, Zane, when he comes up, he's speaking out loud to himself to reveal that he's really behind all this. Like, 
if he's a normal person, like, he wouldn't say a word. He would just go up there and get the dummies and go downstairs. But he comes up and he's like, oh, they thought I was afraid of you? And he picks up the smaller dummies. He's like, hmm, I'm going to hang you outside my bedroom window and I'm going to put you in the shower. And after this trip, Trina and Daniel will never mess with me again. Uh, then Trina, like, says, like, you're a naughty boy, Zane. And so and he freaks out. And then they come out from behind the couch. And he's like, no, wait, I have to explain. And, like, and they chase him down the stairs. So he was responsible for everything so far. So like I said, did Slappy Slappy actually did kick him. We see it. If he really got kicked by him, wouldn't he say that? Like and be like kind of freaked out that like this puppet not puppet, I'm thinking of puppet master now, that this dummy actually kicked him in the leg? Like you'd think that's something he would bring up, but I don't think he does. Uh, then he, he had to manipulate those photos, which I'm sure is easy for him. He's a photographer and stuff like that. So he's done all of this, and he fucked with his aunt's dinner like that? That's terrible, man. Like, what a dick thing to do. Like, and you, he, you, saw, you see how upset she was? Like, she was crying and stuff that her dinner was ruined. He's a terrible nephew. He's a terrible person. Uh, then when they go downstairs, Slappy comes out. And he starts talking in his voice, and I'm going to attempt it here. He's like, Oh, you want to be a prankster, don't you, Zane? Ha <laughs> ha, well, maybe let the professionals do it. Actually, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> it's like pretty much how Slappy sounds. But, like, when we see Slappy in this one, I feel, I, if I remember right, it's not like this in the second one, like in Night of the Living Dummy 2. But in this, it's so obvious. It's just a, a, a small person, like, in the costume, walking around. And that's like that with all the dummies, like, the bigger dummies. Like, he's a lot bigger in this than he is in Night of the Living Dummy and uh, Bride of the Living Dummy. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> like, it really looks stupid. Like, you just know that it's somebody in this costume here, and he's walking around. Like, it's, it just looks really cheap and really dumb. I mean, I know that with the budget that the show probably had, which probably was not a lot, they weren't able to do anything, like, too realistic and make it look great or anything and didn't have probably money for great effects or anything like that. I mean, we see the CGI they use, so that's, it makes sense. But it's so ridiculous looking at Slappy running around and stuff and just knowing that it's some person doing it. And then Slappy goes up to Rocky and he just breathes some green shit into him. And uh, then he's alive, and he's like, yeah, sure, boss. That's how he talks. <laughs> and he's, he's a cool dummy. I like Rocky. So now Rocky's alive, and to be continued. <laughs> so now we're on to part two of Night of the Living Dummy 3. After these commercial breaks. Back from commercial breaks. Hope you enjoyed them. And now, Night of the Living Dummy 3, part two. And now we see Zane hanging out outside with Trina and Daniel. And he's saying, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin your dinner and everything like that. He got a bit carried away. He got a bit carried away. Dude, he, like I said, he, like, ruined his aunt's night. She was hysterical. And he just said, I didn't mean to mess up your dinner. Yeah, that you see all the stuff that was moved around and fucked with in the dinner table? He spent a lot of time doing that. So, like, don't even say that shit, that you didn't mean to do it, and that he got carried away. No, he meant to do it. Like, he, it was it's almost like a work of art, like, the way that he screwed up the dinner table and all the food. So, I don't take his apology at all. As silly as this whole thing is, I do like the parents, actually. Like, the actors who play them and stuff, and I think they do good. Like, obviously, not great acting or anything like that, but it's believable. And, like, I, I, I liked both the characters. So, both the parents are cool in this. And then the parents are, like, saying that the whole situation has been successfully diffused. And the mom's like, we didn't have to call in the National Guard because they see Zane getting along with the kids again. And then in the background, we see Rocky and Slappy dragging and carrying some of the other uh, smaller dolls, uh, ventriloquist dummies, whatever. And so now they're moving the dolls all over the place. And the parents now went out. I don't know where they went. Probably dinner and a movie. 
Netflix and chill? Something. But they're gone. And so they have the house to themselves, the three kids here, and you know shit's about to go down. Whenever parents go out for the night, ventriloquist dummies come alive and start fucking with people. So anytime your parents in the, back in the day used to go out somewhere for the night, you were getting fucked with by ventriloquist dummies and you just did not know it. Because it's, it's a fact that it happens 100% of the time. So then they see two dummies, the smaller ones that Slappy and Rocky put on the fan as the fan's twirling around and the dummies are on it. And they obviously, since they caught Zane right-handed and stuff, and he admitted to it, they, they blame Zane. Like, oh, nice one. And he's saying, like, I, I didn't do that, I swear. And then he's, she's like, then who did? And he's like, whoever did that. And he points to the water cooler, and there's a dummy fully stuffed into the, the plastic big part, the gallon of stuff, of water on the water cooler. So Slappy did that? Get the hell out of here, man. There's no one who's doing that. How did he do that? How did he have the time to do that? He didn't do it in two seconds. Like, it's not like he just sneaked around and, like, it's not like the ones on the fan that he could have snuck up on the table real fast, put him up there, and left. He, this whole dummy, I wish I could show, like, a picture, like, a, is stuffed into the water cooler water jug. The whole dummy. How? He stuck him through the tiny hole on the bottom? Because I used to have a water cooler. We've all been, to, at, we've had jobs and stuff that has a water cooler. We've, we've all seen a water cooler, is my point. <laughs> and there's no way that you're shoving a dummy into the water cooler without breaking apart the container and stuff like that. So, it's so crazy. Like, it, it works, it's creepy, but there's no way Slappy did that, Rocky did that, or anyone on the planet could do that. And props to Zane for, uh, you know, saying what I just said. He said, you can't fit something that big inside of the bottle. It's impossible. So, props to you, Zane. I like your style. But I still want to punch you in the face. Though not as bad now. And then while they're arguing and saying Zane did it and Zane's blaming Daniel and everything, they turn around and they notice Slappy sitting like that on the table, right under the fan with the dummies above it. And they all realized that he wasn't there a minute ago. So, like, where did he come from? And they were all together. So now they're starting to think something is going on here. Okay, so they do address the kick from Slappy. Because um, they're both saying, like, w we didn't do this. And Zane's like, I didn't do it either. And then Trina brings up and says, didn't you say that Slappy kicked you yesterday? And he says, yeah, I thought it was just your dad playing a trick. Okay, so it does make sense. So, sorry, Zane. Like I said, I don't want to punch you in the face as much now. Now, even less, because I went a little harsh on you about that kick. I'm sorry, brother. I love you. He says, maybe the, his, the dad did it by accident, hit a wrong lever. I don't know if people say it that way, but where I'm from, and every place I've ever been, it's fucking lever. Like, <laughs> it's a lever. I've never heard someone say lever. So, back up a little bit on the punch ability scale, Zane. Sorry. You know, it's funny that I remember, like, every line to this and to, like, a lot of these episodes just from watching them so much as a kid. Like, it, it's kind of scary that, like, I don't remember them, like, before they say it. Like, with some of the lines, a lot of lines I do remember. But like they'll he'll they'll say something and right as they're saying it, it'll come into my brain and I'll finish the sentence. Like it's funny. Like I watched these a lot when I was a kid, so I remember a lot of the lines and what happens here. Yet couldn't remember the whole thing with the kick <laughs> for some reason. But then he goes up to to Slappy and uh, Zane and he's like, I don't believe it. Like and he's like, he bends over in front of him so. Goes back to the hole better than Inzane <laughs> from earlier. So he goes to, to Slappy and says, Come on, old buddy, old pal, like, kick me. Like, do it again. I dare you. Uh, then he's like, Nothing happened. So he's like, Why isn't he doing anything now? And then Slappy kicks him. 
And he's like, because you didn't sell pillages. <laughs> I gotta stop talking like that. <laughs> but when Slappy's walking around and running, chasing them and stuff, it looks so ridiculous. It looks so dumb. Like I said, like it's obviously just a guy in the costume doing this. And it's so distracting. It's like you can't suspend disbelief. Like maybe when I was a kid, yeah, you can. But now, like as an adult, I can't. Like I can't suspend disbelief for that. Like I'm just looking at it. I'm just looking at a guy in, in a Slappy costume running around like it looks so dumb and this should be like a one two three done situation right like there's three of them versus one dummy he's a ventriloquist dummy unless it's like megan that i watched today who's just supernaturally or just no explanation is stronger than anyone on the planet and could just fucking move a table just push it like it's nothing and the whole table goes sliding across the room we don't see any evidence that he's super strength. So, I don't know. This should be done immediately. They should just fucking just gang up on him and just tie him up, gag him. And that's basically what they do and put him in the case and stuff. But then he comes back. It should be done. Like, they should be able to tear this dummy apart. Rip his head off, break his arms off, all of that. And then he'll probably be like Chucky, where in Child's Play 1, like the first one, the original, where they shoot Chucky and like his head's full, his head gets cut off and then he's still moving around and controlling his body parts. That's probably what would happen if they did that. But they take the chest that they put him in and they dump it down the well and they say, all right, I guess we're good now. Hey boss, but they don't know that I exist. They don't know about Rocky. You're right, they don't know about Rocky. He's still around. And then Daniel says, like, I guess we should just go to bed, right? After Trina says, whatever head is, and Zane's saying, like, I didn't believe it, and I saw it, I still don't believe it. Trina's like, whatever it is, it's gone now, and then should we just go to bed? Would you be able to sleep knowing that there's a living dummy right outside your house, you know, down a well in a, in a suitcase or a crate, whatever the hell it is? I wouldn't. I don't sleep a lot normally, you guys know that. But I would never be able to sleep knowing that there's a, an animated, alive dummy that's right outside the house in the well. All I'd be thinking about all night while I'm not sleeping is, what if he gets out? What if he just opens the thing and he climbs up the well? He can come back. Like, like that would be the thoughts racing through my head. There's no sleeping at this point. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I like when Trina's, like, trying to go to sleep. She's reading a book at first, and it's, the, it's Zane's book, Conquering Your Fears. <laughs> That's funny. And then she goes to turn over to put the book uh, on, the, you know, on the side table, and Slappy's right there. And then he ends up coughing up a frog. <laughs> It's funny. It, it, uh, I can imagine that being creepy if you, I was in that situation, like at, at their age. But maybe the frog will turn into a prince if you kiss it. This now never made sense to me. He goes, Slappy disappears. And then they hear him in like the uh, air, con the, like the vent. And they show his footprints on the wall. Like, his, the, here's the wall here. And his footprints are going, like here, up the wall. Like he's walking sideways on the wall. How is he doing that? Like, really? Like, none of that makes sense. There's no way that he's walking up a wall sideways. Like, 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 like the wall is the ground. Like, there's no way. Like, the, a lot of the stuff in here I'm noticing for the first time just because I haven't seen these in forever and I'm just overanalyzing them like crazy and like this is not the type of show to be overanalyzing stuff because you're going to just be making fun of everything in this. But there's no way that's possible. And then he's in the air conditioning vents and stuff like that and he gets into Zane's room and he breathes that green, green shit into him and... They go into Zane's room, and all the dummies are there, and now Zane is turned into a dummy himself. So the green shit, in, it like, exhaled into a dummy brings him to life. But the green shit exhaled into a human being turns him into a dummy? 
I guess that's what happens here. And then Slappy says when they say like, oh, we're going to tell mom and dad, he's like, just ends up saying, if you tell anybody, then I'll turn both of you into dummies. <laughs> that's what he says. So Daniel's freaked the hell out. He's like, I'm done. He's, he's like, I was, I thought I was scared, but now when like Trina's like, listen, Daniel, we have to, we're not going to end up like Zane. We, we're smarter than him. We could figure it out. And then they remember the card that was in his shirt with the spell on it, and they bring it up, and he's like, wait, like, Trina's like, wait, the card that was in his uh, shirt, remember? And he's like, yeah, it was like a spell or something, and she's like, a magic spell. If he's recalling that that memory and saying that it was like a spell or something, wouldn't he have said that, like, right then and there after when she was reading it? Like, be like, oh, that sounds like a spell. Like, I don't know, another little thing, but, like, just that whole line being there doesn't need to be there because it's stupid and it makes no sense. And then the most convenient thing ever, <laughs> and we see this in a lot of movies, not a lot, but we see it from time to time, where with reversing something, it, it literally takes you to reverse something. Like play a tape backwards or read the words backwards and that's what it is here. Like Daniel says, like, what if we read the words backwards? Because they've figured out that reading the spell brought them to life. And they just figured it out now. Like, the first thing I would have thought when I saw Slappy alive and walking around, I would have thought that, oh shit, that thing I read, it brought him to life. Immediately. Like, you don't just read, like, another language spell every day. Like, that's a special occasion type thing. Like, it doesn't happen to everybody in their lives. So, just the fact that that happens... And then just now she's thinking, like, that must have brought him to life. Trina's a little slow. But then Daniel says, like, what if we read it backwards? And she says, yes, that's brilliant, Daniel. Like, we got to find that card. So now they are off to find that card. Pick a card. Any card. Nope, you lose. Hey, boss, why are you making them lose the card game? Because, Rocky, I don't know if I... Alright, I gotta stop doing this. Cause I look like... I sound like a crazy person. So they go out to the well, thinking that the card might be in the thing that they locked him in. In the, uh, you know, box, crate, suitcase, whatever. And they pull it up from the well, and it's not in there. So they figure that Slappy has to have it, and now they're gonna have to go sneak on Slappy and try to find his card. And they go up to the attic, and they're trying to, like, be real quiet and stuff, because Slappy apparently is sleeping, and so is Rocky. But then it's just, you know, it's a trick. He's, he's not sleeping. He's a ventriloquist dummy who's alive. I don't think they need to sleep. Like, they don't think this? Like, they really think that this dummy is sleeping. I don't know, man. At this point, whatever. So Daniel goes up to Slappy, sneaking up there, and he goes and he touches the card. He, like, his hands, his fingers are on the card. All he has to do is just snatch it real fast. But it's, he has his fingers on the card, and then Slappy moves his hand away. And he says, don't touch the merchandise. And then Trina starts to try to go down the stairs, and Rocky shows up and, like, not so fast, little lady. I gotta stop. Just like that, though. So now they're trapped up here in the attic with a bunch of dummies that are alive. So then he tries breathing the green shit into Daniel. And Daniel, like I said, like how weak these ventriloquist dummies should be. He just shoves him and he goes flying. <laughs> like that. So why is he even a threat? That's what I'm trying to say. Like it should be so easy to get rid of this dummy, to kill him. Even if you can't kill him because of magic and whatever the explanation is you still would be able to dismember this thing so easily. Like, he hardly pushed him, too. He just went like like that, and he flew across the room. <laughs> I don't know. Then they read the card in reverse, and Slappy falls to the ground. As does Rocky. Can't forget about Rocky. He's my boy. I will say this, though. When Slappy's, like, pretending to die, and he's like, oh, no, no, uh, 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 and he falls to the ground. Better and more believable than Lee Winnell in Saw as Adam when he smokes a cigarette and pretends to die. 
I just, I'm, you know, I did the first saw because I'm doing the whole series this month. I'll probably start with the the sequels like tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, probably after Day of the Dead tomorrow, I'll do Saw 2 and 3, something like that. But it just made me think of, of Adam from uh, Saw and just how terrible the acting is in that part. Like, so funny. But obviously Slappy's not dead and that whole plan didn't work. And see, Rocky is, like, his slave. And <laughs> because he flat out says it. He says that you two are mine, Slappy says to them, and says that you are my slaves, just like Rockhead over there. Now teach him a lesson. And then Rocky goes over to try to do something. And then they, like, do the psychology thing on him and say, like, he's not, you know, like, he would never call you a slave, uh, their father. Like, would never call you a slave and stuff. And he treated you right. When Dad found you, he fixed you up like all the others. Basically turning him against Slappy. <laughs> and then, like, and it's funny because Rocky, if you haven't seen this and you're watching this for some reason, Rocky is dressed like a gangster. <laughs> like, he has, like, a pinstripe, like, a striped suit and, then, like, like the fedora-type hat with the, a white trim around it. Like, he looks like a gangster and talks like one, too, if you haven't guessed from me, it, my impression of him. And he turns on Slappy, and just, they start brawling it out and fighting on the floor. And then Slappy just goes up to this puppet, or I keep saying puppet, whatever, the dummy. And he goes up to this dummy who's like this old man-looking dummy with his hair all like out and stuff like that. Like he got electrocuted or something, and his mouth's a lot. And <laughs> he goes up to him, he's like, hey buddy, like, can you help me please? I need you to help me. Oh, no, you know, wake up. <laughs> oh man, I sound insane. But that's what happens, and it's so funny. The fact that he just goes to like an, a not alive dummy and asks for help because he's getting his ass kicked. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's really funny watching these like years later. Like, I think I've watched a few episodes of this, like maybe like eight, nine years ago or so, like when it was on something it was on tv or something and i just oh shit the goosebumps series like i'll watch some of this but besides that like it's all from my childhood of like watching these this show every day when i came home from school and like just recording them and just watching the tapes and stuff the vhs tapes and stuff and it was creepy back then and i said in my video for the haunted mask that i think it's the best episode in the series and it is it does have some creepy parts to it that like to this day hold up like it's i still find you creepy this episode and slappy in general and everything is just hilarious like none of this has any creepy factor to it at all like it's just so ridiculous so out there and just it's done so poorly and like <laughs> i don't know it's just hysterical like and i can't believe this is a 50 minute video like, it is a two-parter, but so was The Haunted Mask. And that was like a 20-minute video or less. Whatever. We're having fun here. I'm going on tangents as usual. But, oh, it's so funny. And then he picks up, Rocky picks up uh, Slappy, and he goes towards the window, and he throws him out the window. And Slappy catches uh, the, the railing and stuff on the roof, on the edge of the roof. And he's hanging there. And then he says, don't you get it? I'm invincible. And then lightning comes and hits the house and then magically goes down the roof and hits him. And he explodes into nothingness. Oh, it's so funny. And it reminds me of Goldeneye. A James Bond movie with the the Russian dude and he's like flipping the pen all the time and stuff and he goes I am invincible and then he gets killed immediately after that <laughs> that's what it reminds me of oh what a great show what a great episode man uh, then Rocky just falls like down like the spell wore off because Slappy's dead well he's not really dead but he's gone for now and uh, what's his name, Zane, isn't a dummy anymore, and he wakes up, he's like, I just had the weirdest dream, and then we get, like, a shot of, like, the antenna on the house, and then we see Slappy's head burning on the floor, and then we just have a still image of his face, man. And then we see the next day, and Trina's fixing all the, the dummies upstairs in the attic, and she goes and touches Rocky's face, she's like, Thanks, Rocky. And then it zooms in on his face, and you think he's going to blink or do something, but 
he does nothing at all. And then they go downstairs, and Zane's parents are there to pick him up. What a stupid ending. <laughs> Zane walks away to his parents' car, and then they're saying goodbye, and they were talking about having maybe Trina and Daniel going to Zane's house for Christmas and stuff, and now they're all friendly with each other because they've been through this whole ordeal and everything. And then he walks to the car, and he's right... The dad's right in the driver's seat. He's behind in the passenger seat. Like, he's about to get into the car. And they say goodbye to him. And then we get an exorcist head turn. His head just turns all the way 180, facing backwards. And says, like, I'll be seeing you real soon, cousins. And then it, com it proceeds his head to complete the turn 360 back to its original location. Right in front of his dad. I mean, he's behind his dad, but his dad doesn't look and see this. Like, at all. I don't know. That's a, it's such a stupid ending, man. Like, I don't even know what to make of that. So Slappy, like, got himself, his soul or whatever, into Zane before he got exploded by the lightning. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't think they mention it in uh, Bride of the, Lim of the Living Dummy, because that's the next one that came after this. Pretty sure they don't mention anything about this third one in Bride. So, I don't know what to think of this at all. Like, I'm, that, that's my only theory, is that he was able to somehow transfer his soul or something, and now it sounds like child's play, like, transfer his soul into Zane so he could live, because he knew that he was going to get killed and destroyed and blown the fuck up. I guess. I don't It's such a weird ending. And then we end with R.L. Stein talking to a ventriloquist dummy of himself. And then he says, have a good night, everybody. And then he gets, like, pulled up like a marionette. And he's being controlled by somebody. And they say, no, have a scary night. And then it just ends. And that's it. So, <laughs> Night of the Living Dummy 3... This was fun. This was a fun video to make. I'm sure I'm going to sound like a lunatic, but hey, I do in every video I, I make on here. So that's a good thing about this whole horror community, too, is that you can, after you get comfortable and you, like, get friendly with people and make friends, you can be completely yourself. Like, you can just act stupid, act crazy, and, and like, just being silly, over the top, and you're still accepted, and stuff like I don't know it's hard to to describe but I'm sure those of you who are friends of mine and stuff with the, your channels and everything and know me and we we know each other you probably know what I mean like after a while you just get to just be yourself and if people don't like it fuck off go do don't, don't watch like it's as easy as that it's as honest as can be but what a nostalgia like so much nostalgia watching this like as I'll have with all the series, like, going through this. There's four seasons. These are only, there's only, like, six episodes on Netflix that are the two-parters. So I'll do those first, and, like, as time goes on, and then I'll move on to the actual four, se uh, like, seasons that are one episode each. Those will be short, because it's only, like, a 22-minute episode. So, 53 minutes on Night of the Living Dummy 3... <laughs> <laughs> at friggin' 4.48 in the morning we're ending. So, yeah, Day of the Dead is definitely not happening. So, I'm gonna just lay down and throw some random movie on, and then tomorrow I'll, I got work in the morning, I'll get that done, uh, then I will watch Day of the Dead and have a video up for that, and uh, then I'm debating on whether to do Saw 2 and 3, or another zombie movie that I want to keep as a surprise. And it's basically my favorite zombie movie of all time. Like, close. It's in the top three for sure. It's, like, even top two. Like, it's number two. I'd have to really rack my brain and really think hard about it if it's number one. But I always usually say, like, it's it's basically my favorite zombie movie. So, either that and Saw 2, or Saw 2 and Saw 3 after Day of the Dead. But, um, yeah, this was fun. So, wherever you guys are from, hope you're having a good morning or a good night. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone who is in the States. And it's nighttime for them. And uh, sleep well. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.